how to measure the distance between objects in Photoshop. You can use the ruler tool to do that. So where's the ruler tool? Just go over here and eyedropper tool and ruler tool. So select that, let's press L on the keyboard. And let's start right at the top. So top left, top left and click. That adds the first point and drag down. And I'm dragging down to say there. Long control bar, long here, you've got all this kind of information, X and Y, and the first point is zero, zero, right at the top, top left, zero, zero. Now the width and height. Now the width is along here, that's there, 590, and the height is there, 472 now. You can see there, 472 on the ruler over there. So you can see that is there. If I go over here, this is the first point, and drag that down away from that zero, zero position, you can see as I do that, obviously the width and the height change. So this is the width, that bit there, and that's the height. And that's been reduced now down to 354, 236, etc. Now if I click on here and drag, measure this shape, so I'm just dragging along and releasing. So just click and release. And I can go over here, click and release. You'll know something, it only creates one measure or ruler any time. The first one is gone. So if you don't recall that information, you have to go back and just measure it again. And I'm gonna show you how to record the measurements in a sec. But I've got this line from here to here. But it also shows the angle as well. So it shows the angle, which is zero. Obviously it's a straight line horizontally. And you can see there, H is zero. There's no height to it. The width is 708, and that matches the length. That's the length from there, that position, to there, that position. So you've got L1, 708, and A. Now if I decide I want to measure the other one, so let's just, you can click on it anytime, click on that second point or the first point, and just drag it around. You can also click on it there in the center and just drag it around, reposition it. If you want to, you can reposition it there, backwards and forwards. But I put it there and there. Now what it shows, you've got the width, obviously it's straight down, so there's no width. The height is 206, that's the height of this shape. And you've got the angle is now minus 90 and the length is 236. So you've got the length and the height match exactly. The X and Y position, obviously now the Y is there, 118. And the X is obviously a lot further along from that initial point over here, 826. You can see 800 odd there using this ruler. Also, you've got here, use measurement scale. You can deselect that and that will change various settings up there. More useful later. Right, you create your line. You've got this line. You could write it down. You could go to a pad, just make a note of it. Obviously not great, but what you can do, you can go to the measurement log. You can find the measurement log in window. Go down here, measurement log. So measurement log. Also, you've got info and it also gives details up here as well. I should mention that. It's along here and it's over here as well. Most time I don't look at that, but, so you can just remove it. But record measurements. So click. It records it anytime. So if you want to, just record measurement. Exactly the same. I haven't changed it. The only thing that will change will be the time that's recorded. So you can see here you've got ruler tool. That's the source. There's, Measurement log does record a few other things from other sources. So it's obviously got that root of the source there. 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. It will give you those values as it goes through. And you can see here, 1 to 1, scale. You can change the scale. That's using this right side menu. Scale units in pixels. So working in pixels, it could be centimeters, etc., etc. Factor, scale factor. Now you can set it to one to 50 or one to 500 because maybe you're doing something like obviously a building or something and this is a room. So you've got the room there. Obviously you don't want to have say in 55 pixels or something. You want it to show the actual measurement. And that's what that's for, the scale factor. And you've got here the count. So obviously in this case, it's just one each time. That's all it gives. And the length, it gives records the length. Now it doesn't record the X and Y, which is odd, but it doesn't record that. And you've got angle as well. And also you'll notice you've got here the label. It's labeled. You can't see the label, but I've created 
obviously during previous tutorials, multiple other rulers, it will just say 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It just continues until you close the program and come back to it, and then it will start as one. Now, what you can do, date and time as well. So you've got here, so you might change it one day to a different distance. So you want to record it again, so you've moved it, record it again, record measurement, just click again, and then it will set that. Thing. Now, the one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't follow the shape. So if you decide to move that shape, that ruler goes as soon as you go off to another tool. So if you click another tool, that's gone. Click there, and the ruler's back there. But if you go to, say, the Move tool and reposition it, and then go back to the ruler, you can see the ruler is still where it was. It doesn't move with the shape. So just put that back again. And back to the ruler. So you've got these various information stored. You've also got the document as well. Now you might not want that information, you might not need that information, but of course what you can do, you can export this, so it's useful to keep the document information. How to do that? Well, you can select all of them, so go this right side menu here, click there, and you've got here a number of options. You can select all, so select all, they're all selected. You can then export that information. So you can go over here, again there, and you can deselect them all. You can also export selected. You can also delete them all. So if you want to delete them all in one quick go, instead of just doing delete, 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 you can delete them. But export selected, and then you can save it, obviously, to a text file. So a text file, and it will give you all that information, which you can then use, obviously, in your project. I'm not going to do that, but click cancel. So also, click there, you've got Auto Display Panel, and this one, Set Measurement Scale. So default, that's 1 to 1. Custom, you can set it 1 to 50, or 1 to 500. So you can just enter this value, and then all the measurements shown will be 500 times what the actual pixels on the screen are. But I want to keep it, as before, just 1 to 1. You could also click here and set Select data points, custom. So click that. You might decide you don't want the label. You don't want the date and time. So you can get rid of those. You don't want the source. Not interested in that. You don't want the scale even. If you're doing one-to-one, -one, doesn't particularly matter. Scale, and so on. And click OK. And then you'll notice here, still seems to be displayed. It's a bit weird the way it does it. But however, you have to delete them. Yes. And now, if you record these measurements again, go to record measurements, then you'll notice that information's gone. So you haven't recorded it. Now, it doesn't record it hidden. It's purely just not recorded. So if you then change your mind, say, oh, you know what? I want that information recorded. So go and go here and set data points, custom, put them all back on again. Source scale, scale units, click OK. And I drag this out. You see you've got there, only when you do record measurements, so click there. That one, obviously, the source, scale, it didn't record it. It doesn't know what they were. You've got the columns back again, but it doesn't include that information for those various options there. Well, let's just say you want to click here and drag, and you've got that angle. So you can see it's 45 degrees. You can see there, 45. You've also got L1 there. That's the length, 334. So that's the distance from there to there as a length. And again, it will show you the width and height across there and the height across that. Again, 236 there. And also the X and Y, the start position for that line as well. You're probably wondering what the L2 is. There's L2 up here. Slightly mysterious setting, this one, because it just doesn't show anything normally. Well, what you can do, if I just go up here, just click on top and drag down and release. And now if I hold down the option, Alt or Option key, that's on the keyboard, Alt or Option key, you'll see you get this right at the end, you get this cursor pop change, it's just an angle. And then you can just click and drag down that way and release. Now you've got two lines, so you've got L2. Now, obviously L, they're exactly the same setting because of that distance there and that distance exactly match. But what you can do is you can now just drag that up to there and you can see obviously then it becomes 236. Or if you 
make it closer and closer. You can see then, as you do that, obviously it becomes 40. And you can then drag that up. Again, it shows you the angle between the two, so 45. So you can go over here. So let's just click here. Let's just click here and drag. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't then remember next time to do this. So again, you can drag down like that and release. Then hold down the Ultra Option key and hover to this point and then drag along like that. And now you can see you've got an angle between, obviously that's 45 degrees. And you can give the information L2 there and L1 distance there as well. So that's the L1 and L2. That's what that is. I must admit, most time I don't use that L2. You'll notice there's also a straighten layer option. Now this works in a slightly odd way. Well, certainly for me anyway. Make certain the ruler tool is selected and then create a ruler. Now I'm gonna create a ruler, obviously like that. That will have no effect whatsoever. So if I go over here, take the move tool and I just position it, say the angle of that shape is like that. Obviously it depends on, you might have an image or something, some type that's slightly off angle and you wanna just straighten it. Press return. Well, what you can do, just go to the root tool and you think, oh, I can straighten it like that. It's selected, make certain the layer's selected. This would then straighten it, make it go like that. That would, to me, would be the way it would. If you just click on straighten layer, it doesn't do anything. So what you need to do is go here and click here and just drag along like that. And you can see as you do that. That's why it's slightly odd, but you can put it, position it, say, like that, on that shape, on that. And it's, I think, slightly odd the way it's done. But say you've got like that, you can then click straighten layer and then it straightens it. It's slightly odd. I personally think that it could have been done in a slightly other way around. But that seems to be the way that straighten layer works. Please put in the comments below if you've worked other ways of understanding that straighten layer feature. But for me, that seems to be the functionality for it. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions about the ruler tool, always great to hear from you. Also, a like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.